We get a little backtrack here while we're mixing in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of fun. You don't need to like pipe it in afterwards. It's just already here. <sighs> All right. All righty. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> so we're in the Hall of Justice, which is actually a recording studio in Seattle. And I hate to say it, but I think it's sort of a Seattle institution. I'm introducing Scott Clay. He's a local Pacific Northwest musician, and today I'm gonna get a little more information from him about why he does what he does. I was joking with Mike, the engineer here, a couple weeks ago when we were here, and I was joking that the duck tour should stop off here and people <laughs> could like walk through the studio. Like just take a pass through and be like, oh yeah, I've seen part of Seattle, like an important part of Seattle. <laughs> that actually would be really funny. I could totally see that. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I guess just to give people an idea, Seattle has this amazing musical heritage, but because we're based here and we've been living here for several years, it's it can be easy to sort of overlook that. And I went on a studio tour of KEXP the other day, mm. and there were people that had flown in from Copenhagen and Austin and they were like, oh yeah, we listen to this radio station every morning. Yeah. And I was like, what? <laughs> like, oh, okay. Yeah, you always forget it. Yeah, you kind of forget, you know, kind of the musical heritage. So when yeah. I was, when I was in Costa Rica, I went and walked into a bar and there was a guy wearing a Nirvana t-shirt. And I was like, I'm from Seattle. And he was like, really? I love Nirvana. <laughs> like, I love Nirvana. And I was like, yeah, we have more than Nirvana there. It's like, we also have, you know, Starbucks and, you know, other things that are non-music related. <laughs> Boeing, but you know, no big deal. Yeah, airplanes, who needs them? <laughs> Just whatever. Amazon, that'll probably be out. <laughs> That's so well, funny. thanks so much for taking time to interview me today. Yeah, I'm actually really excited to be here. I've never been to a recording studio before, so this is pretty amazing. I was commenting to Scott earlier that it feels like I've walked into someone's living room, but they have an extraordinary amount of instruments. It would be the living room I would want to have. Yeah, actually, mm -hmm. I, I forgot mm -hmm. to mention I'm not leaving, so. Yeah. <laughs> not sure. You're in my living room, actually. The only other better living room in Seattle is at the, um, the Living Computer Museum. They have, a, they have a 1980s themed living room where you can play like Nintendo and they have an old record player and everything is vintage just like in Stranger Things. And I walked into that room and flipped on the record player and turned on the Nintendo and everyone in the room was like, how did you know how to do that? And I was like, because this was my living room 15, 20, 30 years ago, whatever it was. <laughs> I know how to operate all this machinery. It's from 1987. <laughs> uh, the 80s. Mm -hmm. Man. Well, since you're a native of Washington and you're based in Seattle, how do you feel like living in the Pacific Northwest has influenced your music? Well, uh, in terms of writing, I typically write when I'm outdoors, and we live in no better place in the world than to be outdoors. So, That's so true. I do a ton of writing uh, when I'm hiking, when I'm paddleboarding, when I'm running. Um, when I'm just out and about um, in our beautiful place, you know, our beautiful state. So, um, one of the songs that we're recording um, here this this month was written when I was hiking, and I was supposed to meet my brother and some friends of ours over a two-day trip, and I never found them in the mountains. Like they were like, really? let's let's go up this trail and meet, and we'll spend two days hiking around. <laughs> and I literally walked to that point and just sat there for like five hours, and never never found them. So I went on a two-day hiking trip by myself and wrote one of the songs that's on this album. Well, there you go. I mean, I guess if you're, you know, just waiting in the mm -hmm. wilderness, you could just write a song. Yep, that's what I did. <laughs> that's so funny. I love it. Huh. So when did you first pick up the guitar? I was 14 and I had my own room in our house. I, my, my brothers shared a bunk bed and then I had my own little room and I remember opening up the door and buried in the closet was my mom's classical guitar and I didn't know anything about music. I just pulled it out of the case and it had a little tuner inside and I learned how to tune it and then I just immediately started singing and writing basically in the first week of playing guitar. So it all happened when I was 14. So you're a natural. <laughs> I, I picked it up on my own. <laughs> okay, well. Um, is there a music era that influenced you? Um, 
right around that time when I started learning to play uh, was a big influential time. And I remember uh, back when you had to buy CDs at the actual store before streaming music, uh, walking into, I can't remember what the name of the music store was, but I, I bought the two disc album, uh, Dave Matthews and Tim Reynolds, and it was an acoustic album of them performing live. And it, to, to this day, it's one of my favorite albums. It's just really quirky, really interesting. And the, what they can do on two guitars and two vocals over the course of like three hour performance is just incredible. So that's so that era is definitely. That's so funny though, because Dave Matthews is also a Pacific Northwest yeah. musician. Yep. So that's kind of interesting mm -hmm. that that influenced you. That's yeah. very cool. Yeah. yeah. He's someone that you can certainly run into around town. Yeah. I actually have seen him in Ballard before. Mm -hmm. I was just hanging out having coffee and I was like, wait, that's Dave Matthews. <laughs> that's him. He's just right there. <laughs> <laughs> He's walking right past. He's walking right, right by. Um, do you have a particular artist that you would love to collaborate with, like your dream collaboration? Uh, if it could happen, I would. I would definitely love to work with Gregory Allen Isaacoff. Um, he's definitely someone who's inspiring to me, and I've seen him a few times live, and always been really interested in the way he performs and the way he writes. So, he would be someone I would love to to collaborate with. If, you know, in a dream in a dream scenario. That'd be really cool. Yeah. Yeah. He's such a cool guy. Um, when you're writing, what inspires you? What's kind of your process? I work mostly from a dream state or like a subconscious state. Um, I don't really write with my logical mind as you would if you were writing like an essay. So. I typically keep my guitar like sitting next to my bed and it's just within arm's reach and at like three in the morning if I am in the middle of the dream, sometimes I'll have like a melody or a lyric or a guitar part come to me as I'm sleeping and I'll roll over, grab the guitar, I'll have my iPhone next to me and just start recording. <laughs> and I have a lot of recordings where they're like four hours long because I'll start recording for 20 minutes and then I'll fall asleep and then it just keeps recording me sleeping. <laughs> so I do I do most of my writing from kind of a dream state and um, a lot of times when I go into a song I don't really know what the content of the song is or what it's about mm -hmm. um, and I'll just sort of piece it together and over the course of the of writing it will sort of start to make sense as to what the, the content is and what it's about so um, it's definitely a, a kind of a strange process for me and I very much enjoy it being kind of mystical because I don't want to figure out everything. I, I like it the way it is. So yeah, mostly a dream dream state. Well, from a dream state, it seems that it would be so raw. Mm -hmm. It's very cool. Yeah, like yeah, and a lot of times it will be about like childhood things or like some deeply emotional things that I am working through that maybe are coming out in my dream time. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so actually, um, as everyone knows, travel is kind of my thing. And one of the things that I really liked about Scott is that he's a big traveler as well. Would you say mm -hmm. that travel has influenced your music? Yeah, it, it has, for sure. Um, not every song I've written, but I can remember um, in particular the second album I wrote uh, called Price of a Life. I wrote um, while traveling in Central America. And the, the title track is all about sweatshops and you know people that are working in really terrible conditions. And I was inspired to write about that when I was in Guatemala City. I toured around the city and got to see a lot of um, corporations that we know, we've come to know and, and love in the United States that are using you know, sweatshop labor in Guatemala City to produce their products. So that, that song was written about an experience traveling mm -hmm. and every other song on that album was written in a hammock or you know somewhere on the beach or in a hostel in like El Salvador or Nicaragua or Costa Rica so that was an entirely travel based album that's very cool yeah. so you were in the hammock in the dream state yes writing. yes <laughs> I love yep. it that's so great um so I guess with 
how many places you've been. I mean, you've traveled to so many continents. Is mm -hmm. there a particular place that you visited that makes you feel like you're returning home when you go there? Yeah, there's a there's a, a place I go. Um, it's called it's a little little country called India. <laughs> <laughs> you may have heard of it. <laughs> uh, I when I went there for the very first time, I flew into Bangalore, and I remember. Uh, just getting off the plane, getting to my hostel, and then going into a park in downtown for the very first time. Mm -hmm. And these women had strung their saris across these two trees to, to kind of create a sort of swing. And they were swinging their babies like in their saris. Oh my gosh. And I was like, I feel like I've been here before, but I'd never so been to cool. India. And I just remember like taking a nap and kind of walking around the park and just like, oddly familiar with the things that were happening and it really felt like home so i've been back to india a few times uh since then and it always just kind of has like a, a special it's a special place for me so that's yeah. so cool i'm so inspired to visit yeah that's it's a, very, it's a very, very cool. fun place very cool place wow i like it um i guess this is a less fun topic but what would you say is one of the hardest um, performances that you've given? As far as like live? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I remember this now. Um, I was asked to perform for a birthday party at a winery that I've played at many times. I didn't really know the people that were hosting the birthday party. Um, and they, I showed up with my guitar and my sound equipment and very quickly they told me, we don't really want you to play guitar. We just want you to have the guitar. And we need you to stand in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, okay. And not only did I need to stand in the corner, but I needed to stand there for four hours. Holding, so, holding, holding the, guitar. the guitar. Or just standing near the guitar. No, I needed to have it. I needed to sort of act like I was strumming and playing, but not right. actually make any sound. Because they didn't yeah. really want me to ruin the ambiance that was there so well actually when i like to have live music mm -hmm. i would prefer that it not ruin the ambiance mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah yeah so that was definitely it was a it was a very good paying gig so <laughs> the entire time i was there i just kept thinking of like how many dollars per minute i was making but that didn't really take away from the fact that there was still three hours to go and two hours to go and an hour to go it was a very awkward that's, performance that's true <laughs> I can't even imagine that. <laughs> if it had been more of like, if it had been modeled more as like a modeling gig, I think that would have made me feel better. Okay. But it wasn't. Yeah. But it but it is sort of like modeling because you're just sort of displaying the guitar. Yeah. Yeah. But they wanted me to be a, a it was a live performance that they asked me to be a part of. I don't know. No, no, no. no. <laughs> it was a performance that was not live. Yeah. <laughs> that was definitely the most difficult gig I've ever played. Well... Hmm, okay, that one's actually kind of funny. I like that. Yeah. So what would you say is the funniest thing that's happened to you while you've been on tour? Recently, I was in Maui uh, on a tour with uh, a couple other bands, and we were in Kihei at this Irish pub called Dog and Duck, and it is a place where people go to really put down. Like, there's a lot of Jameson <laughs> that flows through that place. And we were playing some live music, some, some originals, and we had a, a tip jar opened up and this girl walked up to us and she had five twenty dollar bills in her hand she's like i will pay you a 100 bucks if you play hansen mbop and of course we're like well yeah for a hundred dollars we'll play just about any song except billy joel but that's a whole different story um <laughs> but <laughs> uh but yeah so i was like yeah let's play some mbop so we played hansen and she was dancing around and then we like finished the song and went on to another song and she very casually walked past the tip jar and pulled her hundred dollars out and left. <laughs> Are you serious? <laughs> and we stopped the set and ran after her and we're like, you said you'd pay us a hundred dollars for Hanson and then you took it out of the tip jar. You can't take the money back. And she's like, well, I really like the song and they are my favorite band, but I can't afford to pay you a hundred dollars. And then we were like, well, why did you tell us you would? Oh my <laughs> we, would have, we would have played the song for much less, but you offered us $100. <laughs> and she wouldn't That's give it back so to funny. us. Wow. <laughs> so she, she got us to play Hanson for free. So this was like parking lot drama afterward? 
No, Are this is during. Like, we stopped the set to go chase her down. What? I love it. That is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I, yep. Win okay. in Maui. Win well, in I Maui. mean, she can't afford it. She wanted to hear Hanson. She wanted to hear Hanson. You Hansen. guys look like the type of band. We where played some Hanson. You would need to play Hanson mm -hmm. for $100. Yeah. And I'm not kidding you. She had three Hanson t shirts on, three different layers. She like, like, like while she was dancing, she just kept like pulling one off. No, this is when we one. chased her down in the parking lot. She's like, I really love Hanson, see? And then she like pulled up three layers of shirts and there was three Hanson shirts on. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why she can't afford to pay you guys $100 because she spends all on t-shirts. It's true. It's true. <laughs> Those official Hanson Brothers vintage t-shirts are expensive. Yeah, they Sorry. are. <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> I can't believe it. That's hilarious. Um, wow. Well... To kind of close things out, I I would like to ask you what you feel has been a piece of meaningful advice in your career and um, your creative process and something that you would share with other creatives. I would say, um, I mean, when it comes to writing, definitely write from your heart and you do, you know, whatever the things that are most authentic in your writing and then um, trust your instinct. You know, if you think something is worth writing about, then do it. If you think a song is good enough to play, then play it. So that's probably the advice I would give there. I love it. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to answer my questions. Yeah. It's been awesome. Um, if the Ride the Duck Tour ever stops here, you guys should all check out the Hall of Justice. This is <laughs> so cool. It's kind of blowing my mind. You might yeah. have to charge more for the Ride the Duck if it comes through the <laughs> Hall, Hall of Justice. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs>